Hey guys, Jim Grant here for MLN TV, and we're back once again in beautiful, fabulous Las Vegas for the day four of the SHOT Show Top 5 Product Picks. And so for day four, we are starting things off with number one, Crimson Trace HRO. It is a heavy recoil optic. So Crimson Trace, primarily known for their laser sights, is now introducing a small reflex sight that is fully enclosed and ruggedized and built specifically for use on heavy recoil firearms like the SCAR or a 12 gauge shotgun, as well as fully automatic weapons. The HRO features multiple brightness settings and the controls for which are actually on both left and right sides, so fully ambidextrous. And the center reticle is the Crimson Trace exclusive special crosshair they've got, and it's 2 MOA. Now the MSRP on the HRO is $479, and a little birdie told me that street prices should be closer to 400 bucks. As far as availability, you can expect the HRO from Crimson Trace in spring of 2022. And that brings me to number two, the Daniel Defense DM4 Riz 3. So the Riz 3 is the latest edition of the DDM4 series of carbines, pistols, and rifles, and is essentially a new rail system available for the guns. It utilizes the same interface as the original rails for the DDM4 in that it bolts directly to the upper receiver, but unlike the original rails, it's no longer a quad rail, and is substantially lighter than even the Riz 2. Now this still features M-Lock slots like normal, and good news is for shooters out there that already own a DDM4, is that it is completely compatible with the previous model. But no word yet on either MSRP or availability. So stay tuned, I'm sure it'll be landing at stores pretty soon. And that brings us to number three, the latest caliber from Federal Ammunition, the 30 Supercare. Now, I can tell you all about it, but get it straight from the horse's mouth. So here is one of the reps from Federal to give you the lowdown. Hi, Chris Locke at the Federal booth here at SHOT Show 2022. And we just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a summary of the new product, the 30 Super Carry. So why a new cartridge? The goal for the 30 Super Carry was we want to, we want to get to nine millimeter terminal performance, but then go beyond that. And then what is the other reason people pick a 380 or something smaller? So. Uh, it's it's the size of the firearm, right? So uh, with the 30 Super Carry, we've got a, a 312 diameter projectile. So smaller projectile allows for a smaller overall uh, ammunition. And so the, the kind of the benefit to that will be eventually the manufacturers can build a frame around it and have a 380, more 380 sized firearm. And then another benefit to it, of course, and this is more obvious to the market just in general because of the trend towards small micro nines, right? High capacity micro nines. The, the fact that the 30 Super Carry is that smaller diameter allows for more rounds on board in an existing platform, an existing size. So you can take and get two extra rounds in all the guns that are going to be available at the launch time. You get two extra rounds per magazine. So you've got terminal effectiveness that's on par with uh, up to around 124 grain 9 millimeter from us, right? So we, we, we do the HST comparison just so that people can see apples to apples with the same bullet design. Um, it's going to be right at 380, so not, not surprising. Uh, no, no big sticker shock right at the 380 amount. And uh, so yeah, that, that kind of covers pricing, uh, the different performance features that we've got for it. And then there will be a 100 grain HST, 100 grain American Eagle, 115 grain Gold Dot and 115 grain Blaze of Brass, as well as Remington's going to be offering 100 grain HTP and 100 grain UMC. That's a real quick, fast run through of 30 Super Carry. And that brings us to number four, the Mars Orient. This is an AR-10 style firearm, but despite its outward appearance, it's a whole lot more than that. And once again, to give you the full rundown, here's the rep. All right, hey folks, I'm Mike Marino. I'm from Mars Inc. This year's rifle is the Mars Orion Platform. I'll tell you a little bit about it. This is not your typical AR. This is a recoil operated 308. The barrel reciprocates the full length into the receiver. The feed chambers locks and you're ready to fire semi-auto. What that does for us is it takes that sharp recoil spike, makes it a long, gradual recoil curve, very gentle recoil. We put a folding stock on this to demonstrate that the rifle can cycle with the stock folding. You can shoot this gun with a stock folding. Everything is happening in the upper receiver. So what we did is we took everything that we liked about the guns that we had and we put it together into one. 
You see here, it's got a forward takedown pin. It looks a little bit like an AR. There's no rear takedown pin at all. To shotgun this, you just push a latch and drop it open just like that. All right? If you take it apart, you take your upper and lower apart here. Again, it starts to look a little bit like an AR, except that ours is unique. The upper and lower come apart in two halves, and that gives you access to everything on the inside. Easy to clean, easy to maintain. This is a multi-caliber rifle. I can change the barrel in this gun in less than 60 seconds with no tools. I'll show you how. So first, I pull the barrel spring forward. I pull this tab out of the back. I depress my separator bar, and the barrel comes out of the back just like this. So now I've removed my 18-inch 308 barrel, and I can put in a 22-inch 6.5 Creedmoor if I like, change the barrel, change the caliber. Each barrel has a barrel return spring. This one's light, it's the lightest one. You can customize it, light, medium, or heavy, if you want it to cycle more quickly, or if you want that slow, gentle recoil curve. To change that out, you pull the spring away, you open up this little shackle here, spring comes off, new spring goes on, shackle snaps right onto place on the barrel, and the spring holds it in place just like that. You can put this rifle together with a muzzle device if it's 850,000 or less, and it just goes right back in the tube, snaps in place there, spring goes forward, tab goes in place, and there you go. You just change the caliber. Let's say that you don't like the the full pick rail. You want something a little bit lighter or more streamlined. We have several different uppers. This is just one example. You can see we've removed all the excess material. This is a Tika upper. It's got a built-in Tika dovetail in four positions if you want to mount Tika optics here. If you want to change that, you just drop it on, slide it forward, and now you're shooting with a brand new chassis. One guy was telling me that what he would probably do is get two uppers, put one optic on one, one on the other, and then change them out for different applications. We've got our own proprietary bolt carrier group. We were using an AR-10 bolt, but we evolved past that. Now we've got a straight pull bolt system. You pull it straight back, the lugs retract, and it extracts with minimal operating energy. We did that to keep the recoil down. It's got a forward, non-reciprocating charging handle. This is very important to me. Number one, I want to be able to hold my rifle anywhere I want without being concerned that my charging handle is going to bite me. Second, I want to be able to shoot my rifle with my pistol hand grip, maintaining my cheek to stock weld, and then charge it up here if I need to. You can take this charging handle out, and you can put in a right side only, a left side only, or a T-shape so you can charge it from either side. You can customize this to a knob, a fold, an angle, whatever you like. Everything's fully customizable. We like to say that our rifle is forward compatible. That means it's going to be good for the, all the changes that we make in the future. Put it back together, the upper just slides right on here, and everything just slaps, snaps right back into place. Before I finish putting it together, I'll show you one more thing. You see this little step inside of the magazine well here? That is for magazine inserts. If you want to change the mag well shape, you can drop an insert in here, and then you can shoot a training round or a different caliber with a different mag well. This is also good if you want to be California compliant. You drop in a non-removable magazine from the top, and then you load the rounds in from the top on your shotgun. Then you're California compliant with all the other features. So, pin it in back, just like an AR here, and then just snap shut. There you go, folks. The Mars Orion new this year. Thanks for watching. Very cool, and can't wait to get my hands on one to really put it to the test. And that brings us to our final number today, for five. That is the Meta Tactical Apex. Now this is actually something really cool that I've never really seen before. It's a carbine conversion for full-size Glock as well as the Smith & Wesson MP 2.0, but unlike the majority of those carbine conversions, it's actually a bulba. Pretty neat. And before I continue, here's the full rundown of the Apex and how to disassemble slash assemble it straight from the eyes at Meta Tactical themselves. Hey guys, Meta Tactical here, introducing the uh, world's first bullpup style carbine conversion kit. Take you through disassembly and then reassembly. So essentially, you're going to get this chassis. We're also going to ship you a 16 inch barrel. It's going to replace your stock barrel. Super easy setup. Slide in. Pop in. Engage the firing pin, throw the compensator back on. 
combination with a 16 inch barrel and 26 inch overall length. You now have a rifle, no tax stamps, legal, no FFL. Ready to roll and have some fun. All right, so that's pretty neat. And I don't think I need to tell you guys why you should care. If you want to turn your handgun into a carbine and you don't want something that's enormous, this is pretty much your best bet. Now the only thing I'm concerned about when I saw this design is whether or not it would actually function with a sound suppressor. Because even with a booster installed, it's still a tilting block action. So the barrel's going to move and the added weight of the additional however many inches of barrel to get to 16 inches, plus the addition of the suppressor, it may be too much for the system to actually handle. Uh, so it'd be very interesting to see how that runs. Anyway, that wraps it up for day four of SHOT Show 2022. Again, leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite products are and things you're looking forward to from SHOT Show 2022. For Ammo Land TV, I'm Jim Grant. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And of course, as always, flip side.